Welcome back to Star or Shovel Worm, my name's Luke and today on the channel we're going to be checking out The Legend of Bumbo, a deck building roguelike puzzle game which comes to us from the creators of The Binding of Isaac and features Bumbo, a character who should be familiar to anyone who's played Isaac. Unlike the tear tossing antics of that one though, The Legend of Bumbo is a tile matching puzzler, kind of like if you played Candy Crush whilst having a bad acid trip. So let's jump right on into it and take a look at the game and make sure to like and subscribe to support both me and the channel. So much like Isaac, the story in this one doesn't make an awful lot of sense to start with, but it sets the scene for us and actually acts as a prequel to The Binding of Isaac. Opening with an introductory cutscene though, we see Bumbo, who's presumably homeless, living in a box behind a house on a hill, but he's content with his trash and his coin. Unfortunately, some dark nasty snatches his coin and hops down into the sewers with it, and so grabbing his trash back, Bumbo follows in pursuit of the thief. But the sewer is filled with plenty of other dark nasties standing in the way of him and his precious coin. And that's about it for a storyline until you get to unlocking some of the game's different endings. The most important ones though come after several successful playthroughs and completion of the game's final challenges, and while they are definitely worth seeing, I feel like many people won't get to see them due to the amount of time it takes and the game's challenging RNG factors. Overall though, the story elements in this one are enjoyable and definitely go some way to explaining the events in Isaac, but I'd say just enjoy the gameplay and don't get too bogged down with trying to unlock them, as they're quite brief and there's always YouTube to fall back on. So being a huge fan of The Binding of Isaac, I was interested in giving this one a go to see how different the gameplay is, and whether or not it offered the same amount of enjoyment and replayability. And after around 7 hours worth of runs, I can tell you that while it does share some similar roguelike mechanics, it's a different kind of game entirely. Now, when you first begin the game, you're given a brief tutorial on its basic mechanics, but there are a lot of additional things to pick up along the way, and as new characters are introduced, you'll have new strategies to master. To start with though, let's talk about the basics, and I'll attempt to keep things as simple as possible. So, each dungeon in the game consists of around 4 or 5 rooms full of enemies, a treasure room and a final boss room, and being a roguelike, the enemies you encounter in these are selected at random from a pool. Upon entering a room, you'll be the first to make a move, and in order to perform actions in the game, you're required to manipulate tiles in the board at the bottom of the screen to form rows of either 4, 5, 6 or 7 matching tiles. Now you can move rows of tiles horizontally or columns vertically, with your maximum number of moves denoted by the yellow energy bar in the top right, and basic tiles come in 6 different varieties, each of which offers a different bonus when matched. Bones and teeth allow you to attack enemies, poops allow you to place down a barrier to block enemy attacks, whilst green buggers delay enemy attacks, and finally the yellow teardrops grant additional energy, whilst hearts restore your health. Depending on how many of a single tile you match though, the resulting bonuses will become more powerful. For instance, matching 5 poops will allow you to drop a poop barrier which can absorb multiple hits, 6 bones will grant you 3 bone attacks, and 7 teeth will perform a special attack damaging all on screen enemies. And it's an interesting concept which on the surface is very simple, but rewards players for forward planning and skillful matching. Now as you destroy tiles you also gain mana, which in turn can be spent to perform special abilities, and there are a wide variety of these including attacks, healing abilities and ones which manipulate the board, moving or destroying tiles or re-rolling entirely. Like Isaac, you can also obtain active items which automatically recharge after a specific number of turns have passed, as well as passive trinkets, and there are plenty of different synergies between items and skills, allowing for some interesting and powerful builds. 
Now, when it comes to the game's enemies, there's some good variety here, with many of them taken directly from Isaac. Though unlike that game, they attack along three different rows, with some of them moving between rows or hiding in the back. And their attacks generally consist of them firing a single projectile at you, which are usually queued up for a turn, giving you a chance to counter them. There are special enemies which are immune to basic attacks or spells, some which perform their own special abilities or have to be defeated in certain ways, and like I said, there is a decent amount of variety to them, though I did find the enemy mechanics in general to be a little simplistic. That's not to say that they don't present a challenge though, especially in the latter dungeons when you have rooms full of enemies, and getting through some of the rooms requires you to be very strategic with your moves and abilities. But one of the key issues with the game is that success often comes down to your RNG, and I frequently found myself on a good run, only to get stomped by a room full of difficult enemies, or even in the early game, get off to a bad start due to some terrible RNG with the board tiles. The game's bosses are much more predictable though, with special movesets and strategies to defeating them. Again, you'll find a few familiar Isaac bosses, as well as some entirely new ones, and they've done a decent job when it comes to making each boss feel unique, though there are only a couple of bosses per floor, so after your initial encounter with them, the challenge that they present diminishes quite rapidly. Preceding these bosses, you'll find shop-like areas where you can spend the coins you've earned from beating rooms, and here you'll find ability-modifying syringes which reduce things like the cost or cooldown, the Wheel of Fortune which you can spin to receive a random stat boost, or you can even gamble on the shell game for a chance to win a random item trinket or spell. Now the game contains a total of 4 chapters or dungeons for you to work through, which upon completing them for the first time you'll unlock new characters, and there are a total of 7 characters in the game, all variations of Bumbo, each of which starts with a different set of stats and abilities. Alongside the spells, items and trinkets you earn whilst proceeding through the dungeons, these characters are what contribute most to the replayability in Bumbo, and the abilities and passive bonuses of each character offer up distinctly different playstyles for you to try out. For instance, Bumbo the Stout gains bonus mana and has a knockback attack, and Bumbo the Nimble's basic attacks cause him to gain mana. But my personal favourite was Bumbo the Weird, who gains energy when he kills, and has multiple ways to manipulate the board. So overall, while The Legend of Bumbo likely won't live up to expectations if you're anticipating another Isaac, I personally had a great time playing this one. I'd say the learning curve is less steep than Isaac, with you able to take your time and think about your moves, and while the RNG factor can be a little frustrating, I was still able to see a reasonable level of success with the majority of my runs. I'd say for me, the most disappointing thing about Bumbo is the lack of any real accumulative progression or unlocks. With Isaac, one of the most enjoyable aspects were its item unlocks, the alternative routes and all the different challenges. And while you do have the additional characters to look forward to, there's really not much else in the way of unlocks with this one. In terms of replayability though, it's still there to a certain degree, with each run providing enough variety to keep things ticking over, but I'd say the game best serves as one to dip in and out of whilst on the go, rather than being one to play repeatedly for hours on end. So visually they've gone for a kind of Paper Mario style visual aesthetic with this one, which works well when coupled with the Isaac art style, and I'd say it's definitely one of the most unique looking games on the Switch. I've always loved the character designs and twisted creations from the world of Isaac, and while I didn't really see anything particularly original in Bumbo, it was good to see the return of some old favourites, and overall I really like the visual style of this one. When it comes to the audio, again, nothing particularly original, and the audio design of Bumbo is very similar to Isaac. We get some familiar sound effects, and the music was created by Ridiculin, the same composer for the Isaac games, so it does have a very similar vibe. Overall though, good stuff on the audio and visual front. So performance wise I had no real issues when it came to frame rate, and the game ran fine in both docked and handheld modes. 
when it comes to gameplay issues, nothing major to report either. I did have a visual bug which screwed up the tileboard, but this was fixed by quitting out and then continuing my game, and I'd say more than anything, the game does a poor job of explaining some of its mechanics, especially when it comes to certain enemy types. But other than this, I had no real issues, and from what I can see, they've done a good job of porting the game. And so, when it comes down to my own personal rating, I'm going to be giving The Legend of Bumbo 4 out of 5 stars. The Legend of Bumbo pays fan service to Isaac with its themes and expansion on the backstory. It features some enjoyable gameplay mechanics requiring a decent amount of strategy, and there's plenty of fun to be had with it. Just don't go into it expecting the same level of depth or content as Isaac, and you shouldn't come away feeling disappointed. And so that about does it for this review of The Legend of Bumbo on the Nintendo Switch. So are you an Isaac fan? And will you be picking this one up? Let me know down in the comments section below. As always, if this review helped you out, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe for more Switch reviews and content, and until next time, thanks once again for watching, take care and game on.